For Brian and Sherry Hammonds, we're with Serenity Bus Project, and this is our 2000 Amtran Genesis. It's a front engine, 40 foot uh, bus, and we've turned it into a tiny home for ourselves. And we are traveling for full time with four children, road schooling along the way. As you come in the stairwell, we have uh, created a little dining room area for our four children and my wife and I. Um, we cut down some church pews and used that uh, as our dining room area. We have a shoe rack that we built down here for the children and we also have created a little laundry area for ourselves in the front of the bus. And then we have our first uh, bunk beds. Uh, this pulls out into a full size bed and then we have the bunk on top. This cool. table gets a lot of use as our homeschooling area. So mm -hmm. we have books that can go up here. They can do their homework here. We even have storage down at the bottom underneath. We've got a TV in the front as well for entertainment. It's on a swivel, so when they're eating, we can move it out of the way, and that uh, then there's plenty of room for them to sit. But it's also here when we want to sit down and watch uh, Lost in Space or a Disney movie or something. People ask us how we manage to get six people in this area, and we don't. The four kids sit here. So they have a table, Brian and I will sit on the couch. Mm -hmm. So we're still in the same area when we a, eat our meals. Having a family dinner. We've been married 20 years in, in this coming June. And in our entire marriage, we had always said that we prize travel over things or experience over things. and had never gotten to a financial situation where that was possible. She was homeschooling our children, so she wasn't working outside the home, and I was trying to support the family um, of six on my income, and it was just what we needed to get by. There was never any, any extra, so. We sold our house and most of our things in order to buy the bus and be able to create a home outside of, and, in the interior of a bus. We took some louver doors from a repurposing store and uh, cut them in half. And we found some little uh, bank uh, safe, like safety secure deposit boxes um, and screwed those on there. So it felt like, you know, more like a school locker. Each child picked their own color. Uh, so we've got Savannah, Abigail, Gavin, and Gage, and they all got to paint the inside of their lockers and kind of personalize it for themselves. We ripped out the ceilings, we ripped out the sidewalls, we ripped out the floor, we sprayed, uh, sprayed the entire interior of the bus with lizard skin, both the sound deadening barrier then the thermal barrier, and then uh, just build off of that. And because we've done that, and it's very unique to our build, I still have two, three inches of height in the center corridor. And like I said, a lot of buses you'll go in that have done the floating subfloor idea. They just, I, I, I have to hunch to, to walk through the bus. So that was something that we've done that we've been very, very, very happy with. You'll have to check it out on YouTube. It's an amazing product. Our range is propane and needs no electricity. Our furnace is propane and just uses a little bit of electricity for the blower. We have a hot water heater in our storage compartment outside the bus, and it is tankless and it is propane as well. And then our refrigerator is AC, DC, and propane. We went with a lot of propane because we're trying to minimize the amount of uh, electricity that we use. Um, so when we do put solar on the bus, we can be more efficient with our use of power. The girls' bunks, uh, this one, uh, uh, Abigail's pulls onto a full-size bed and then uh, Savannah's up top here in her bunk. 
and it looks a little claustrophobic, uh, but she, little kids, they just love to feel like cocooned and secure. And, and for both of our little ones on the top bunks, they love their, their little space. They have little bookshelves in the back that we made for them. And it's just, it's their cozy place and they love it. The kids have had to, you know, uh, let go of friends and social events uh, with a, just a promise that there'd be those opportunities on the road and uh, some of the friends that they'd make at one school schooly function they'd see again you know somewhere else in the country and and that's been playing out so they're able to make that that adjustment pretty well This is a changing room for everyone in the family. But when I teach in the mornings, I teach, um, I should back up and say that I teach for VIP Kid, I teach a Chinese children how to speak English. But when it's time to teach in the morning, I just drop my desk down and then I have my space where I put my laptop. Where I'm sitting is actually a bench with plenty of storage so you can store books for homeschooling, um, things that I use for my online teaching. We have some antennas on the outside of the bus uh, that take cell phone signals and they boost a small signal and turn it into a larger signal. And then from there we have a Verizon jetpack that takes that cell phone signal and creates uh, a good Wi-Fi for the, for the whole bus and actually for quite a good space around the bus as well. So most cities that we're in, we're able to pull in the 60s uh, megabits per second for download speed, which is fantastic, way more than, than she needs. So right now, we're not able to just boondock in the middle of the National Forest um, because we need that really good internet signal. So hopefully at some point, uh, we'll be able to lessen our need for the internet um, on such a regular basis so we can um, do some of those cool boondocking experiences within the woods and whatnot. We have a nature's head composting toilet, which works well for our family so we don't have to have a black water tank at all. Um, it's actually very, very easy to use, but our friends are terrified of the composting toilet. So we found a sign that says, don't panic, it's organic. It's our little inside joke to our friends who would rather wet themselves than use our, our funky toilet. They've, uh, we've had a lot of funny moments with them racing off from a, from a visit to the bus uh, because they had an emergency bathroom issue because they won't use our composting toilet. There are a few instructions that go along with it. So it's just, it's a weird, for them but we used a lot of um, pallet wood and uh, just an insider tip uh, if you're gonna use pallet wood bleach it first it, like every third board that we bleached foamed up like a like peroxide on, a, on an infected wound uh, so we're glad that we bleached the wood out and got rid of some of those pathogens and and uh, got rid of some of the nasty treatments they put on there to preserve the wood it also surprisingly scaled back some of the gray and brought some of the color out of our pallet wood but the whole inside of the uh, toilet area is um, done with pallet wood six foot two me can still stand in my shower inside of my radius because we're right on the ground here and there's no drop ceiling so that was uh, something that i needed for myself just so i didn't uh, get back issues trying to take a shower we did the shower walls with the vinyl flooring tongue and groove and we just sealed uh, in, with caulk in between the, the grooves so it would make a really good seal. We found on Amazon a shower head that uses water current 
two light LEDs that are in the shower head itself. And so this whole shower stall is illuminated by the flow of water through the shower head. And it turns from green to blue to red, just depending on what the temperature of the water is. Um, but it does a good job of illuminating the space without electrical wires or batteries or things of that nature. So it's, it's very, very safe. And we have a hose that connects in there and runs out the shower window. So when the kids inevitably come back from the beach, they're literally on the beach right now. Uh, when they come back sandy, we can rinse them off outside before they come into the bus. Full time living on the road. Well, we've been beach hopping Florida for the last uh, month, just a new beach every morning. And it's just uh, a really cool way to, to raise our kids and show them the world in person instead of out of a textbook it's just it's been fantastic this is probably my favorite space in the bus because it's well it's our room but i oftentimes will hide here from the kids um, close the curtain and it becomes this quiet oasis for me We've got storage up at the top brian built closets his and her set of closets on either side um, top and also on the bottom the pallet wood wall uh, took forever, but Savannah and Gage had a lot of fun trying to piece together, almost like a jigsaw puzzle, how we were going to put the wood up there. Underneath the bed, we have 150 gallon freshwater storage. We had it custom built for the space. There are two stainless steel baffles in there so the water doesn't slosh side to side. Um, we wanted to put a California King in here, so we had to get one of those ones online that come in a roll, and we brought it to, back to the space, and when we opened up, it was like, poof. So if we ever decided to change the mattress, we'd have to like cut this thing out of here. It's not going anywhere. The bus is a total of 40 foot. I think we're at about 36 and a half foot to this wall right here. Behind here is a, a emergency exit, but we took that three and a half uh, feet of space and made racks for all of my tools and our electronics, uh, like our um, solar setup and our um, power grid and stuff is, is back there as well. All nice and nice and cozy. I've worked sales for a long time and I hate to say it, but I got to where I was jaded and just didn't like people very much. And uh, being tied into the school bus community uh, and the, the van life community, that's so tight knit and so amazing. We've met some awesome, awesome people have really come out of that, uh, that kind of callous, I don't like people mentality and really uh, embraced uh, some and we've had a socializing lot of I had, didn't know I was capable of. The easiest place to go to to find out, find all of our social media is with serenitybusproject.com. Uh, when you go to that blog, it will take you to a page where you can find Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube. It all just live streams. It there. all live streams there. Any likes and shares on Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest, uh, are, they go a long way to help us uh, sustain our project. But we also write eBooks. Um, we wrote an eBook on how to uh, how to start the school bus uh, conversion process. A lot of people are t uh, writing books about how to convert a bus, and that's really subjective. Um, what we feel like people really need to know is how do you find a bus how, you know how do you find the right engine transmission like kind of an introduction to commercial vehicles how do you register it as a tiny home uh, insure it, insure it. Uh, so we have a hundred page ebook that we sell off of our website uh, it's like nine dollars and it goes through the the process for over the course of the hundred pages on how to how to get started uh, doing what we're doing if that's something that you guys are interested in um, but like she said, on the third tab of our website, we, all of our social media streams there. So please follow along. We'd love to hear from you. If you like our bus or have any other questions, please uh, send some comments. We'd, we'd love to keep up with you about our progress and uh, our bus build.